All right, I'm here with my 2,000 subscriber Q&A special. Uh, thank you everyone for writing in. Uh, that was collected on my most recent video as of this point uh, in the comment section. Uh, so uh, if you didn't watch that video, didn't get the information on the q and I was tweeting about it over on my Twitter at Objo Gaming, as well as in the community tab. I've been trying to use that on here for a while on YouTube. Um, but if you didn't get that, I'm still willing to answer some questions in the comments. Um, so, you know, go ahead and fire them off down here if you didn't get your, vi your uh, comment read in this video. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for writing in. I, when I first posed this uh, idea of a QA, and a I was a little bit concerned I'd get like one question. Uh, but thankfully, I only, I got several questions. Uh, several different people wrote in uh, and a lot of them wrote several different questions, which I appreciate. So we got a good amount of questions to come in. Um, an answer here, so let's jump right in. First off with Star Wolf's question, and they ask, do you think it's worth playing the Final Fantasy VII original if I play the remake? Uh, the original Resident Evil 2 and 3 look cool, but I don't want to buy them because I played the remakes, and they're older interpretations of the same game, limited by older hardware. I remember playing Link Between Worlds and loving it, and when I learned it's a remake of Link to the Past, I became irritated by all the best game ever lists that put uh, Link to the Past above Link Between Worlds, if Link Between Worlds is there at all. Uh, it's the same thing, but made more modern interpretation, uh, improved about the limitations being on SNES provides. I don't see how the older interpretation is better. Uh, I'd also like to ask your qu thoughts on my opinion stated here, not for Final Fantasy VII, but your take on some games where a specific version is better. And then they go on to say that they found my channel a few days ago and subscribed, uh, which I thank you for that. Um, so not to be like, uh, well, actually kind of guy, uh, but Link Between Worlds is a sequel. It's a follow-up to Link to the Past. It is not the same game. It's not a remake. Um, Link Between Worlds in Japan is called, uh, Triforce of the Gods and Link to the, or Link to the Past in Japan is called Triforce of the Gods. Link to Between Worlds is called Triforce of the Gods too. So they are two different games, uh, both definitely worth playing, both excellent, um, but still two different games nonetheless. But uh, your answer question about Final Fantasy VII, I would say, I would say uh, you're probably going to enjoy it more if you've played the original. Uh, there's a lot of callbacks to music, to areas, um, to different characters, which I would say uh, you're definitely going to enjoy it more knowing the original game, at least at a surface level, uh, and seeing how they decided to translate it this, in this new remade form. Uh, that being said, I, I don't have the perspective of someone who's not played all the way through Final Fantasy VII before the remake coming out. So that's something to keep in mind. I don't, you know, I, I'm sure you'll enjoy it perfectly fine if you don't play the original. Uh, it's also important to, to remember that the, the remake is um, only about a fifth of the original game. Uh, the original Final Fantasy VII is maybe about a 35-hour game. And uh, the remake of just, you know, the first Midgar portion, which is... About a fifth of the game, I would say, is about that length, too. So they're definitely stretching it out. They're definitely taking a different approach to it. It's definitely, it's, I would say it's its own thing to an extent, but I think you're going to enjoy it a lot more if you've seen, if you've played the original game. Um, and I, I don't want to get into spoilers for the ending, but I would just say that uh, the ending might not make sense if you've not played the original. And weirdly enough, if you've <laughs> not watched Advent Children, which I can't believe I'd recommend watching that but you might want to brush up on that as well um, but I don't want to get too much into spoilers of what happens just keep that in mind I would guess um, but I'd say yeah you're probably fine just playing the, the the new one but there's plenty I think it's really really great to go it's really not hard to go back to it's still really really great to this day um, I haven't tried them personally but I've heard good things about the like switch and Xbox one and ps4 ports uh, they have some quality of life stuff uh, some ways that you can kind of like cheese the game to just fly right through all the combat if you just want to experience the story. Um, but I would say that you're probably, I some of the greatest you know moments of that game I think are just seeing th how they interpreted a weird scene or a weird part of the original game. But it could be really cool to see those you know fresh for the first time as well. Um, uh, next part of the question, uh, so. Well, okay, Resident Evil 2 and 3. Yeah, I think both of those games are, are excellent. I just finished playing 3 uh, a couple days ago. I knocked that one out pretty quick. Um, uh, but you asked, you know, how, what if an older interpretation would be better? 
Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with Resident Evil 3, but I know that Resident Evil 3 Original has um, a couple different scenarios that the remake does not have. The remake cut out like a park scenario and the clock tower, which is a pretty big part of the game. And uh, I think it cut out a full boss fight and some enemy types. So Resident Evil 3 might be worth going back to because of that, um, because they do seem to be different games. Uh, but I really like these remakes like this. Uh, because especially like with you know we've seen Resident Evil 2 and Final Fantasy and Link's Awakening uh, I think it adds context more so with like Final Fantasy and the Resident Evils uh, it adds context to these older games it, it allows you to see them completely different way uh, and I think with Final Fantasy 7 it allows you to it makes more sense in a way um, you can see more of the creator intent with these remakes and uh, a lot of the stuff in Final Fantasy 7 original um, is more clear now that you can actually kind of see what's going on and it's not just these blocky characters um but i'm getting a little off topic there yeah resident evil 3 might be worth going back to because of the different scenarios um but some games where the older version's better uh i would say the ps2 versions of resident evil or not resident evil silent hill 2 and 3 over the you know ps3 360 um hd collection <laughs> They kind of botched that. No, at no fault of the developers, uh, it was Konami who gave them like unfinished, <laughs> unfinished code for Resident or Silent Hill two and three. Um, I'd love if those games got remade. Even though I think Silent Hill two is like a near perfect game, I'd love to see those games remade. Um, but yeah, I, I would say those are a better version than that HD port. Uh, a better version of a you know the same a better version of a ported version or an HD version. Uh, I would say uh, Resident Evil 4 on Wii is really good because of the pointer controls. I know that's a pretty common one. Uh, the Link's Awakening remake from last year, I, I enjoy a lot more just because it's not on the Game Boy, which is a piece of hand, a piece of hardware I'm not really that into with how it's not backlit and all that stuff. Um, so I think that's a good example, another good remake. Uh, but yeah, um, I think that's all the parts of the question there. Thank you for writing in Star Wolf. Uh, next question is from Connor is still here and still weird. And uh, they wrote in uh, a couple different questions. First one is how long have you collected for? Um, so I started collecting, I started getting into older games and just trying to go back uh, and play games that I had missed. Uh, I started watching a lot of YouTube videos around late 2010. Uh, and I, I, I marked the beginning of my collecting as January 2011. Uh, because it is the when I went out to my local game store and bought a copy. Uh, the prices are kind of funny to think about now, but I bought a copy of um, Wind Waker for $10 and Metroid Prime for $5. Uh, and went back and played those games, and I, I think both of those games are excellent. Those games are awesome. Uh, and that kind of just, you know, kick-started me wanting to go back and buy older games and, you know, check out different older games that year i think i went out and got an n64 and an nes and a bunch of games for those too because games are still pretty cheap back then um definitely didn't hit a skyrocket <laughs> for a couple more years to come uh if you're talking you know when did i start garage sailing and flea marketing and really building up the collection that was until 2013 um but i would say yeah january 2011 is usually when i start when i you know that's where i say that i started that's kind of where i mark it um what are some of my favorite finds? Uh, I've re for, for referred to this one a lot, uh, the jackpot, jackpot find. Uh, I mentioned that one. I went to a garage sale, it was a pretty innocuous, innocuous garage sale. Um, and I asked this woman, oh, you gonna have any video game stuff, anything like that, any older game stuff? And she says, oh, and she's, this girl's maybe not even 30, I don't think, then. And this was in like 2015, and she's like, oh yeah. You just hit the jackpot and she pulls out like this laundry basket full of like a blue the ice blue n64 with i think two controllers and like every good like a ton of good like n64 games a ton of great ps1 games a ton of great strategy guides and like great condition all this stuff was in awesome condition uh that was definitely a jackpot she said she wanted 50 bucks for it and i feel kind of bad uh because in my wallet all i had was 44 dollars <laughs> And I was like, I'll go run to the bank. And she's like, oh, $44 is fine. Um, I think she said it was her aunt's stuff who had just passed away. So I don't think she really cared too much about it. Uh, but that was a really good one. Um, I like that Master System lot I did. I found, I think, three years ago now. Uh, with the bo box Master System and, like, 
10 to 15 games I got for 50 bucks. That's another really good one. <clears throat> uh, I should at some point maybe do either a top 10 best finds video or a playlist of my best finds. Um, because that would be pretty, pretty good, you know, to look back. Because I've drawn a blank a little bit. But those are two that stick out, I think, were really, really good finds. Um, how many full game libraries do I have? Next question. Uh, so I'm going for the N64 and Dreamcast libraries at the moment, and I'm both I'm about 80 away on both of those. So I don't have any full libraries at the moment, but those are my current ones that I'm working at. Uh, and then I already answered, uh, you know, how long I've collected for and when did I get collecting. I kind of answered both of those at the same time. Uh, and then what's my favorite system or system I'm most proud of? Uh, favorite system is GameCube, uh, but my collection system collection that I'm most proud of is N64, just with all the box games that I have. A lot of them pretty hard to find, like Indiana Jones, uh, Space Station, Silicon Valley. A couple of them like that um, that are pretty hard to find, complete in box. Uh, so that's probably what I'd answer for that. And that's all the questions that they had. Thank you for writing in. Uh, next question here is from Iron Lung 63 uh, awesome username. Uh, they say, do you think collections conventions are a good way to find games, or does the price of admission make it not worth the trip? Uh, it depends on what kind of convention you're talking about. If you're talking like a, a convention like Magfest or Con Bravo um, or Too Many Games, uh, which I've all I've been to all three of them in the past, um, Magfest in 2014. Con Bravo, Con Bravo in 15 and uh, Too Many Games in 2017. Uh, those, I would, of those I would rec, I think I had good times on all of them, but I would recommend Too Many Games the most because uh, that's, you know, where you're actually going to be finding a lot of games, a lot of stuff like that. Um, the other ones I'd say are more meetups and kind of enthusiast, you know, meetups and stuff like that. Um, but they're still good times and you can still find games, but they're usually a bit more expensive. Um, but Too Many Games for the most part, when I went at least, had some pretty good prices, so maybe that's, something to consider but i mean obviously if you're if you're living close to any of these conventions i'd say they're worth going to uh, it gets a little more difficult if you have to you know travel pay for travel pay for a hotel or something um i don't know if i would say that that is worth it uh, if you're going to just find games and and all that and you know try to get deals on games i would not say that it's worth it after factoring and travel and all that um but you know i'd still recommend it for the experience at the very least if you have the money to do that um, but the other type of convention that I was kind of alluding to is just local conventions, kind of local meetups. And those, I would say, are definitely worth going to, um, especially if they're, you know, an hour away, half hour away, whatever it is. Uh, I have quite a few of those, or at least had a, quite a few of those in my area. They're not quite as common anymore. But yeah, those are definitely worth going to. Uh, they're usually only about, what, five or ten bucks to get into. Uh, and good way to meet other collectors in the area, maybe set up some connections and you know find some stuff that you might not find as often uh, so i would recommend going to those uh bigger conventions you know nationwide conventions um maybe not worth it i mean if you're trying to get like a really high-end game that's probably the only place that you're going to find it or see it uh in person without having to go to ebay if you want to get something huge uh make a huge purchase but i don't know if i could recommend it uh, once you're considering taking a big trip or whatever it may be, travel and hotel. Um, but yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, Blue Pikachu asks, how does someone handle growing a collection in a small space? Which is a good question. Uh, so if anyone's been around on the channel long enough, uh, my previous game room uh, that I was in and up until uh, like summer of 18 uh, was really small. Uh, I don't know if it came across that way on camera, but it was very small. Um, and yeah, it's a little difficult. I would just maximize your space. Uh, you kind of just got to make things work. Uh, if you have shelves, uh, obviously that helps. Uh, try to keep, you know have as much shelf space as possible. Um, one thing I had to do pretty often is box stuff and put it away that I wasn't as interested in displaying If I once I ran out of room. That's always unfortunate because it makes it a little harder to get to. Uh, but it's something you got to do at least for the time being. But yeah, I would say, you know, just make sure to use as much space as you can, you know, get those shelves in. You, yeah, it, it is hard. I did have to go through that for a while and that room was a bit of a mess just because of, it wasn't made for having a bunch of games in it. It was pretty small, but luckily, you know, current game room is pretty good size. So I don't think I'm going to be running into that problem anytime soon, but 
yeah, I would just say try to maximize your space as much as you can. Um, is probably the best advice that I have for that. Uh, next question I got in was from Spoonflaps12. Um, say, uh, give me a few questions. I don't have to answer them all. I'll answer all of them. Um, number one, how do you protect and track your collection? If you mean like protect like insurance, I'm currently don't have it <laughs> insured. I don't know if I should be saying that on YouTube. Um, <laughs> But I don't, it is something I've definitely looked into and plan on doing. Um, uh, so that is something to keep in mind, but I don't have anything currently on doing that with. Uh, but tracking it, uh, I just use a Google spreadsheet. I know people use apps um, and stuff to track that stuff. I just keep a Google tr spreadsheet. Uh, it's kind of a pain, you have to update it pretty frequently. But with, with you know, prices, if you want to keep track of that. Um, but yeah, I, I track my stuff by console in a different spreadsheet and then put in what I paid for it all and everything. Uh, so that that's how I do that. Um, but if anyone knows any apps or better ways to do that, leave them in the comments because, yeah, that's definitely so not something I'm great at. Um, what three games should be in every collection, assuming they have the same consoles as me? Huh. I mean, that's a difficult one. I mean, you did say that the questions would be vague, so you got me there. But uh, I would definitely say that's a hard one. I mean, it def definitely depends on what what you're interested in um but i mean assuming you have the same consoles as me i would definitely say uh like super mario world would have to be one i mean come on uh ab absolute classic um you know games that should be in every collection i'm thinking of like you know must play games like the th what are the three absolute must play games um and super mario world's definitely one i want to say like ocarina of time as well i think that game's definitely a must play and definitely an insanely important game. Um, ooh, yeah, that's a hard question. Um, I'm trying to think of something. I mean... Ah, <laughs> yeah, i definitely say Super Mario World. i definitely say Ocarina of Time. As for another game that I think is just genuinely worth playing. Um, whew. I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one. I'll have to get, maybe I'll get back on that one. But yeah, the three games you have to have in your collection is a good question. I've never really thought about that. Um, uh, most expensive game or whatever I'm currently collecting for. My most expensive game, I just did a video on it. My most expensive games. Um, so I would recommend checking that out. I'm trying to think what my, my most expensive game, I believe, is uh, Mega Man 1 in the box with its missing manual, uh, which I got a pretty good deal on. Uh, what I'm currently looking for, we're currently just hunting for um, boxed N64 games, like always, and Dreamcast stuff that I don't have. Um, current, well, I guess I'm currently not hunting at all because I can't go out too much. But um, also just look, I mean, with garage sales, you get what you can get, I guess. Uh, that's a that's a big thing is you got to <laughs> you gotta have, you don't really get to choose what you get. But when I go to stores, yeah, Box 1064 and Dreamcast stuff is definitely what I'm hunting for. Games that I'd like to get that I somehow don't, uh, Super Metroid, somehow don't even have a cart for that game. I don't know how, <laughs> how it's eluded me for so long. Uh, Black Box copy of Super Smash Bros. Melee is another one. Um, somehow has eluded me. I've only ever found one copy in the, you know, probably close to a thousand garage sales I've been to. Probably over a thousand garage sales when you really think about it. Um, so that's one that I, those are just two games and Mario Party 2. Those are just three games that I, you know, I go to all these sales. I found really uncommon, weird stuff, but I've never found those three games uh, as they, you know, as I described them. Uh, so those are definitely three that I guess I would say I'm looking for, currently hunting for. Um, do I collect controllers, special edition consoles or any other accessories? Um, I definitely pick that stuff up at garage sales if I, if I see it. I do collect like the N64 different color controllers. I have a, you know, a few different ones of those. Um, so yeah. And do I collect anything besides video games? Nah. <laughs> it only really is caught on with video game stuff. Um, I don't really care too much about collecting anything that's not video game related. Um, best and worst game in my collection. Uh, that's another tough one. I mean, I'm trying to think of, you know, best games in my collection. Or I have a list that I kind of throw around in my mind of like games that they might not be my, you know, some of my favorites of all time, but games that I think are incredibly good and like pretty much near perfect. Uh, and that list, like I said, Super Mario, Super Mario World's definitely in there. Uh, Silent Hill 2 is definitely in there. Um, 
some of the NES Mega Mans, like probably Mega Man 2 is the one I'd probably stand by the most with that one. Um, Wind Waker, I'd say definitely in there. Uh, more recently, Persona 5 Royal, I think, is pretty much an essentially perfect game. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say probably that. The list, like, I always am tossing different things and different thoughts in my mind with essentially perfect games. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say probably those. Oh, Metroid Prime's another one, I'd say, is pretty much a near-perfect game. Um, but yeah, I would say probably those, one of those. Um, I think probably Super Mario World's probably as close to perfect game as you get um i mean that game is fantastic uh worst game in my collection there's a lot of them uh blues brothers on n64 is pretty horrible uh uh superman 64 that one's kind of uh, easy target uh there's a lot of nes games that are just <laughs> atrocious um but yeah i usually like to focus on the positives more but yeah i i, I like bad games just because they can be insanely funny uh, they're definitely entertaining. They definitely, I think, have a value. Um, I mean, I would say mediocre games are worse than bad games just because there's nothing interesting about them. Uh, but good question. Thank you. And then uh, final questions here from Blinkoom. Uh, some questions. Feel free to pick any that interest me. I'm going to read all of them. Uh, who are the first YouTube channels that watch that focused on, or I watch that focus on game collecting? Uh, I really liked uh, the channel TV and Lust. He did some pretty cool stuff back in the day. Um, that's one of the actual first channels that I found on YouTube that got me into YouTube in general. And, um, definitely the channel that kind of introduced me to the idea of game collecting. Uh, another one is like Angry Video Game Nerd, watching those back in the day helped me kind of get an appreciation for older games as well. I think probably anyone on YouTube in the gaming sphere can say that though. Um, yeah, those are some that come to mind when I think of that. Uh, any channel that stopped making videos that you wish would come back? I can't think of any offhand. Most people, um, most people that I I watched back in the day, surprisingly, still do stuff for the most part, even if it's not incredibly free frequently. Um, and you know, most people that I just kind of stopped watching and that ended up stopped doing videos, I, you know, fine by me, I guess. Um, I can't really think of anyone that stopped that I wish would come back. No, I don't think so. Uh, it's an interesting question though, because you know. I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but when you think of like TV shows, you think like, oh, this show goes on for like five years or whatever and it's done with. But there's some YouTubers that have been on here for like 10 years still doing the same thing. And some of them still get good views, like an angry video game nerd. But some of them, I mean, still doing it, but they get like a hundredth of what they used to get in views. Um, but a lot of them still do it, I guess. So I can't really think of anyone, no. And then uh, what collection do I think I'll put more focus into once my N64 collection starts to get near complete? Um, I don't know. I, I tossed around the idea of doing complete Wii U because I'm only like a hundred games away and all those games pretty much are pretty cheap. Uh, but they're actually, Wii U games are actually kind of hard to find. So that might be a problem. Uh, what collection I think I'm going to go into more? Um, I don't know really. Probably continue with GameCube stuff more. Uh, it's always a hard question because I don't buy a lot of retro stuff actually at retail at full price. Uh, I only usually do if it's trade and stuff and then I just get whatever I think looks cool or whatever. Um, but yeah, I would say probably boxed Super Nintendo. I'll probably transition more more into um, GameCube. Uh, probably more PS1. Try to get some heavy hitter like RPG PS1 stuff. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. DS is another one that's starting to go up in price that I'd like to start getting in the... Uh, some of the more weird and obscure games because that's a really interesting library I know a lot of people just think of it as like you know crappy kids games pets and Hannah Montana or whatever but there's a lot of really bizarre stuff on DS um, I f that's a really great library uh, but yeah there's a couple of them there uh, and that's all for the questions thank you for uh, writing in everyone who wrote in and if you have any questions I'll answer them in a much shorter form down in the comments of this video um, but yeah, I'd like to thank you for watching or listening in this case, I guess. Uh, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter, at Gaming. Uh, leave a comment, like I said. Uh, any thoughts on many of my questions or ideas? If I answered your question wrong or I didn't quite say something that you wanted me to say, like if I didn't, if I missed a certain part of your question, make sure to write that in and I'll, I'll clarify more or whatever. Um, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Let's keep the momentum up and uh, get up to 3,000, I guess, is the next <laughs> next goal. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.